welcome back. Yeah, here we are still in Kos, here uh, in Greece. And this week we're going to be talking Lagoon 42. Now... But before we dive into the Lagoon 42, we're going to take you on a short beach walk. Every morning we come to the beach to uh, do our morning walk, which is, this, this beach is absolutely beautiful, so calm, so clear waters, and uh, it's just uh, an amazing thing to do first thing in the morning. And, and the weather's absolutely beautiful. beautiful. But the other morning we came along here, and all of a sudden uh, we found this uh, rib, or this, it's an inflatable boat at least. And uh, originally there was an outboard engine with it, but now obviously it's, uh, been, that's been taken away. But um, around about between 10 and 15,000 people a year make the journey from Turkey uh, to the Greek islands uh, to seek asylum here and to get away from whichever regime they happen to be in. And it's quite a perilous uh, crossing. Uh, at the moment, uh, the shortest distance is around about five miles, but at the moment it's actually very calm. And I think they pick a calm night and then come across and then either disperse into the uh, local community or they get taken to an asylum centre. And there's around about 20,000 people being held in centres in Greece at the present time and they're not allowed to leave uh, the country and go further into Europe. So then this big piece of plastic ends up here on this beautiful beach. No one is going to take it off, I'm sure. Um, and then it takes about hundred and a thousand years to decompose into the ground um, so pretty much it's going to stay here forever unless someone makes the move to take it out um, then the worst thing is is this you will see that it will decompose in smaller and smaller and smaller pieces over the years and then that is uh, even more dangerous because it gets into the food chain. We can, we can actually see other uh, dinghies mm. here on the beach yeah. uh, that were here before we got here, yeah. which are slowly getting uh, sunk into the seabed uh, and breaking down into smaller pieces. Yeah, so get, once it's getting to the food chain, we're going to be the ones paying for it, isn't it? I'm a big follower of Boylan Slat, if you heard of him, uh, from the Ocean Cleanup. The Ocean Cleanup is a non-profit environmental engineering organization based, based in the Netherlands uh, that develops technology to extract plastic pollution from the oceans and intersect the, the rivers before they end up in the ocean again. So this young man has been dreaming about taking the plastic out of the ocean for years. And the, it, everything starts, started here in Greece when he came on a holiday with his parents and started seeing all the plastic in the ocean. And then from there he um, decided that would be his uh, goal in life, taking all the plastic from the ocean. And uh, it took him a long time for him to make people believe that he was going to be able to do it. But by the age of, of um, 17, he did his uh, first big talk into the world and brought the ocean cleanup to us. Uh, I really want to do something in the partnership with this company when we go next time uh, on our journey around the world. Uh, not just to create awareness, no. Uh, I want to be part, I want us to do something to help the research uh, on the pollution, on the plastic in the oceans. Now, this is proving to be a very, very popular boat. Uh, it's, it's certainly taken over from the old uh, 420. It sits in between the 400 uh, or the new 40 and the 450 or the new 56. Um, when this came out a few years ago, it really did take the uh, market by storm, to be honest. And uh, it sounds as if, or it looks as if, uh, they're going to sell more 42s into the future uh, than any other boat that has been built because they really do get a lot of real estate uh, for your buck. Now, Carl is going to tell us a little bit about the interior of the layout of the boat. To be really honest, this is not my favorite layout. Uh, the galley is not as big as the one in the 450, but it has less space, obviously. But um, it doesn't have enough space for fridges and freezers if we want to upgrade. 
Mm. Yeah, you can get two, one fridge in one freezer. Yeah, but, but that's it. That's yeah. it. Uh, we would like to have two fridges and two freezers. Yeah. The cabins doesn't don't have um, island beds, so uh, we are back on that. Uh, yeah, they kind of like sneaked to, it, haven't they, yeah. to make it look. They made the bed narrower at the front. Now. And the strangest thing is they lower the beds, so yeah. it looks a bit odd yes. to me. Yeah. Isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and also, uh, the four bedroom versions, the uh, heads are much smaller. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, therefore, you'll sort of, if you go and have a shower in there, you get the toilet wet and all that sort of thing. But all in all, um, the layout's pretty good. Uh, here again, you've got a sideways facing uh, child table, which yeah. uh, really doesn't do it for me on a long passage. If we're talking a couple of weeks at sea, uh, you really do need to have the uh, child table looking forward. And even though they've opened the boat up at the back and made it wider they haven't actually got that space into the hulls no. that the 450 has mm. I know the 450 is three foot longer and obviously around about a foot wider but um, that was one of the things about this boat is uh, the, the width of it now a couple of other things these only come in mezzanine level so there's no flybridge version of this boat uh, which is great if that's what you want they also produce a ladder that goes up onto the deck so that you can get up from the uh, helm position to uh, tend to yourselves you don't have to go out and walk around um, outside the there's no uh, fridges or any place for no, fridges or for, something yeah, like that. Which, which you can have a drinks fridge, but we're, we're talking about sort of on the 440 and the 450, they have a little island with yeah, a sink yeah. and uh, which is cupboards great and for like getting fish. Uh, Absolutely. We are great yeah. on that, so we yeah. need to, yeah. to, to think about it. That's right. Now, when you go to the front of the boat, uh, it doesn't have the seating area. They tend to come uh, with um, sort of uh, cushions that you have in front of the windows. But quite honestly, you know, you're sort of kind of lying down and your legs are dangling on the um, the, the net. And it's not really a proper example of a forward seating area. See, what you're missing here, though, is the, uh, the front seating area and the flybridge area, because it's a 42. I mean, I know that's okay to lie out in, but it's not it's the same not the as same. Uh, being able to sit there with a glass of wine in the evening. But this is nice, isn't it? This is a handhold here. Because you can wrap your hand right the way around it, which is uh, quite nicely built in. There's another uh, lounge area there. Yeah, I suppose that's your compromise. You kind of feel like you're going to roll off it though, couldn't you? You need a little frame around it, hold you in. And I guess it's just, it just gets used to. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's as good really yeah. as a flybridge. Yeah. Yeah. Except it, with the flybridge, you can sit out at night in the evening, can't you? Yeah. Where here you can't because there's, there's no seating. That's that. See the winches of the wind mm. Yeah, this is a nice big open area. Yeah, the nav station is sideways. Yeah, that's we not don't good. Really like that's it. not good. Well, it's not good for a long period. I mean, it's okay for a weekend or a week, but if you're talking about sailing around the world, it's you want one really facing forward. Uh, and also the um, the front heads is for four heads, but the front ones are a lot smaller than that on a 450. Um, but having said that, it's two foot shorter. It's cheaper to run. I don't like this um, solution that Lagoon gives it to you for these seats here. I think it's all terrible. It's lower, isn't it, Simon? Sorry? It's lower, the, um, bed. the bed. Yeah. But it's a uh, big bed, isn't it? Yeah. This, this head's is good size. Yeah, it's nearly the size of the one we had on uh, yeah. 400. Yeah. 
but the front one's small. Yeah, the half cabins are quite good, quite a, a good size because you have the bed is not totally um, an island, but uh, it's halfway through, so you can. It's easier to make the bed, and uh, the heads are almost as big as the ones we had on the owner's version on the 400. So yeah, it, it's it's a good boat. It's a lot of uh, windows, a lot of light. I'm always worried about light. Do you know how old is this one? No. It's very, very... Uh, it's not more warm than 450, or the 380. Yeah, great. I don't think this is the boat for us to go around the world on. I don't think it's going to give us what we need in the way of fridge and freezer space and also navigation space, which becomes incredibly important when you're out there at sea for for, for, for nine months, basically. I mean, that's where you're going to have to sit and do your job. Yeah. And Hello. I think this is a great boat, but I don't Maybe think it's here, uh, anywhere near as practical the as the 450. But all in all, I think they are very, very nice boats. Uh, I certainly wouldn't say no to one, but I'm not sure I'd want to take one on a really long cruise all the way around the world. I think uh, you just need a little bit more space and a little bit more comfort. And you have to remember, on a long journey, you're taking an awful lot of stuff with you uh, in the form of uh, equipment to service it, repairs, uh, toys as well. Toys as well, yeah. yeah. You need space to storage, you know. Yeah. You need kitesurfing, yeah. surfboards, or yeah. whatever you do. Yeah. Uh, you have the diving equipment. It's a lot of space you need to put all of the toys in. One of the things that they did to sort of open up the uh, back end and make it feel bigger is they moved the rear walkway uh, forward and moved the aft seat backwards so that the aft seat is at the back and so you walk through the main cockpit if you go from uh, port to starboard wherever on most of the other boats there's a walkway uh, at the rear. Uh, I don't see there's any reason uh, that this isn't an advantage it really is but um, that's how they've actually made it feel uh, a lot more spacious. The other thing that you have is you've got the dance pole in the middle of the uh, uh, the uh, saloon uh, which is a little bit of a, um, an interruption really into everything uh, because the lagoon changed their rigs to go for a much larger Genoa and a smaller mainsail. As